And today we're going to talk about get home bags. And get home bags are a very, very important part of the tools that you should have in your car in case something bad happens. You know, winter is coming upon us right now. And every winter we read about people that got lost on their GPSs and ended up in snow banks or got stuck in the snow. Or even many years ago, if you remember the major ice storm that hit Atlanta on that particular night, uh, I went out at 1130 at night and stayed out till 330 in the morning, helping people get home. And during that experience, you'd be surprised at the number of people that I met that were walking home at 11 and 12 o'clock at night with minimal supplies with them, sometimes limited jackets and sweaters. Other people that I found in their cars that had been in their cars for sometimes eight and 10 hours stuck on the side of the road or stuck on an ice bank unable to move their cars. So getting stuck in the winter time uh, is not unexpected or relatively uncommon uh, during those times. And so those are times that you need to have supplies in your car to help you get through those extended periods. Now, naturally, if something bad happens, you want to stay in your car and do your best to be in your car because that's where heat is. You're going to have more comfort. You're more likely to be found in your car. But in the event that you have to get out of your car and start walking to a place, and during the Atlanta ice storm, many people walked to 7-Elevens, to big box stores that welcomed them in because they'd been stuck in their cars so long. So today we're gonna to go over what's called a get home bag. Now naturally, you'll hear two different terms when they talk about bags. There's a bug out bag, and there's a get home bag. A bug out bag is something that you're gonna use in extreme emergency when you need to leave your residence or your house for an extended period of time and maybe with an unknown destination of where you're going or an unknown amount of time that it might take you to get to that destination. So in your bug out bag, you're gonna have enough supplies to last at least a week. You should have medications that'll last at least a month and you're gonna have a flash drive with all of your important documents and everything copied on those. So a bug out bag is something for a more extended period of time that you might have to be away from your residence during an emergency evacuation or whatever. A get home bag, on the other hand, is designed to last you for say 24, 48, maybe 64 hours. So two, three days at the most. It's not meant for long-term things, but you need everything in it for you to survive during that time. So we're gonna walk through all the tools that you should have, should you have to get out of your vehicle and walk, or you're stuck in your vehicle and you need the resources available to survive for any extended period of time. So the first survival tool that I think is absolutely the best and number one survival tool is your cell phone. So you should always have your cell phone with you. So if you get out of your car and you have to walk or you're in your car, you want to make sure you keep it charged. I mean, naturally, your cell phone functions as several tools. It can be a compass if you're walking. It can be a GPS. People can find you by way of your cell phone. You can be a communications tool. You can text people, people can text you, or you can call people. It can be a map. You can find out where your, what your location is and where you wanna go. So this is an invaluable survival tool these days that has multiple assets that allow you to use it in those bad situations. But one of the limiting factors, as we all know, are the batteries. And so if you don't have the ability to charge your phone during those extended periods of times, then it becomes a useless tool. And I'm gonna show you what I carry in my get home bag so that I can keep my cell phone charged the whole time. The next thing that you wanna think about is what you have in your vehicle. So I'm gonna go through the get home bag and show you. But keep in mind, in my car, or in my truck actually, I have a orange vest if I have to get out and I wanna be seen. So let's say there's an accident on the side of the road or people need help, they're stuck in a ditch or anything like that. I have an orange vest that I can put on. I have multiple flashlights in my car I have or truck. I also have multiple knives. I have several tools. I have a first aid kit that goes on a fanny pack. So if I need to get out and I need to run somewhere, I can put my first aid kit on. I have a larger solar panel if I need more power charging things. So I carry a lot of things 
like rain gear and other things, a hatchet and all that kind of stuff inside my truck. But if I have to get out of my truck and I have to start walking, this is what goes with me along with my first aid kit. So let's walk through my get home bag. I'm gonna show you what I carry. You might need to adjust things based on your needs, but this should give you a solid foundation of what to carry in your get home bag and what to do. So we're gonna go through the top pack. Actually, my backpack itself, is some, what some people call a three-day assault pack. You can see it has multiple compartments. It has a hydration compartment here. It has a larger compartment here. It has a, a medium-sized compartment here, and then two smaller compartments here. You know, obviously I have the shoulder straps and I have a waistband, which really helps you support it well. So a good solid backpack of this nature is all you really need. One of the things is these backpacks can cost anywhere from around $39 to around $149. Find one that meets your economic uh, capabilities and that's what you should buy and it'll be good for you. You want a nice sturdy bag uh, because you want something that's gonna be rough and rugged. One of the other things that many people forget about when they develop their get home bags is that you should be in good physical shape. If you're gonna to have to get out of your car and walk for a mile or two miles or three miles, this can be a very big burden to carrying this on your back. Now my get home bag weighs about 15 or 20 pounds. Um, you might have one that's a little bit lighter, maybe even a little bit heavier, but in either case, carrying an additional 15 or 20 pounds on your back, up hills, down hills, in bad weather, in snow, on ice, can be physically demanding. And so that's why you should always do your best to stay in the best physical shape that you can. Now, if we take my backpack here and we look on the outside, I have these reflective tapes on them. So I keep those on there because if I have to get out in the middle of the night or I have to get out when it's snowing or anything bad's going on, I don't wanna put these on in those bad situations. I want them all already there. Now, if it's a bad event, maybe civil unrest or something like that, and I don't want to be seen, I can simply use my knife and cut these right off, and they're not there, and I'm less obvious than them. On the outside, I always carry several carabiners. Um, those are very important for hooking anything up or carrying extra items. Um, I love carabiners. I think they're an incredible asset to you. Also on the outside of my bag, I carry a fixed blade knife. So this is a very nice uh, knife made by Winchester. Um, I like it because it's a good hunting and keeps a good sharp blade on it for a long time. And so that's excellent. On top of that, holding that in, I have a hundred feet of paracord on a wristband that also has a fire starter on it and an additional compass on it. So I have a fire starter and a compass on this along with my knife on the outside of my bag. In addition, hooked by a carabiner, I have a hydration unit right here that slides into the hy hydration pack on the or pocket on the back of my bag right there. So those are basically what's on the outside of my bag. Now, naturally for personal protection, I know that what a lot of people are thinking, I will have my sidearm on. Um, I usually wear it concealed. And if I had to get out of my car during any type of bad event, I would always wear it concealed because I wouldn't want anybody that I approach to feel concerned about that and it's better tactically and if something bad should happen. So I'll have my sidearm on. If it was really a bad situation and I didn't wanna leave it uh, in my vehicle, um, I might have my long gun with me, so I'd be prepared for that as well. Obviously that would be more noticeable if I did. So let's walk through the get home bag. In my top pocket right here, I'm gonna pull out what I have here is a headlamp, so I'm very easy to get to a light source if I need to. I have some extra batteries in here. I always put desiccants in all my packs that have batteries or ammunition in it. That keeps the moisture off of them, um, so very important. I try to put everything I can into Ziploc bags also to protect them from rain or any kind of moisture, but this is a headlamp right there that I have. Next, I have some hand spray easily available. So anytime I might wanna clean myself or if I happen to get a wound or a scratch and I wanna squirt it real quick with any type of a little bit of an antiseptic, I have that. Next, I have a mask. And so this is a dust mask predominantly designed if there's a dusty situation or anything like this. This isn't designed for like a gas mask or anything like that. I mean, that's pretty obvious. 
Um, there are ways to make a type of gas mask out of a two liter bottle. So you can look that up or maybe we'll do a video on that one time and show you how you can make a gas mask out of a two liter bottle. But this is strictly a nice solid dust mask with a one way Venturi valve on it that allows us, allows me to protect myself should it be a dusty situation. Um, the item that everybody should have, I have a multi-tool right here. So it gives me the access, uh, any type of screwdriver, clamp, any type of thing that I need like that for a multi-tool. Next, I have a couple lip balms. And you wonder, why is these important? Well, these are important for a couple reasons. First and foremost, when you start carrying your backpack and you're walking and you're in duress, you're probably going to start breathing through your mouth. And when you breathe through your mouth, you're going to get cotton mouth and you're going to, your lips are all going to get dry. So having lip balm to keep your lips moist will be a big advantage and take away some of the distraction that can occur with that. In most cases, I have it in my truck. I have a nice package. I always carry gum as well for that same reason. So I don't get cotton mouth if I'm having to walk a long distance and it keeps your mouth moist. I have some sunscreen. So you think sunscreen, even up north in the, around snow, sunscreen is very important. For those of you that live up north, um, those of you that have been snow skiing or outdoorsmen up there, the reflection off the snow can be just as bad as the sun in Florida or Hawaii or any more tropical areas. So having a good sunscreen to cover your exposed skin and your face if you need to is very important. And you want that readily available. I have a notepad and a pen to take notes. And then readily available, I have waterproof matches, something to start a fire with outside my fire starter as well. So I have some waterproof matches. So those are all things that I have readily available that I could need pretty quickly that are right there in the top pouch. Moving down to the next pouch, right on the top in a bag, I have two protein bars. I like to get the very high protein ones. So both of these bars have 20 grams of protein for each one. So this is a snack that I can eat a little bit at a time. I also carry four packages of an energy drink. This has a lot of vitamins in it, B12, B vitamins, um, and a little bit of caffeine, about 83 milligrams of caffeine in it. So if I need that little boost of any energy, I can use mix this in with my water and drink this as I'm walking or chug it down if I need to. So an energy drink along with the protein meals. And then next, one of the things that you potentially could need pretty quickly is I would also have my fanny pack on that has my uh, medical kit in it that have a lot more emergency type medical things. But in this medical kit, I have some trauma sear shears. I have some medications in here that I might need. I have Tylenol and ibuprofen as well. So naturally, if you're having to walk for a day or you're having to walk for many hours, again, if you're not quite in good shape, or sometimes even if you're in good shape, you might want some pain relievers to relieve some of the pain while you're walking. I also have suture materials. So if unfortunately there was a laceration or any injury that could require suturing, um, I have suturing material to put in sutures and do that. So that's pretty much what I have in this box or bag, excuse me. Um, equally important, I have an extra pair of sunglasses. These are just cheap old sunglasses. Again, whether it's summertime in like the tropics and you have the bright sun or whether it's winter time up north and there's a lot of snow, uh, sunglasses are extremely important to keep you from getting your eyes injured and making it easy for you to see everything. Uh, I usually need reading glasses, so I also have a pair of reading glasses in here well, in case I need to read something or see something a little bit better. I have those in here. Then next, I have my, whoops, let me pull this out here. I have a magazine pouch that I could easily connect to my belt if I needed to, and an extra full magazine ready to go. So those are the components of the outside bags. Most of the things that you need to readily access quickly, or you could turn around and you could have, if you're walking with somebody else, open one of these packs easily without having to take off your backpack and have them access any one of these tools that you need. So let's move on to the next part. So the medium sized compartment, and again, you might be, need to adjust this how you want. First, easily accessible right on the top, a pair of gloves. 
So if it's up north and it's the winter time and it's snowing and it's very cold, you might want a heavier set of gloves, maybe insulated gloves, leather gloves that are gonna give you more protection against the weather. Where I live, it doesn't get that cold at all. So I have just a traditional pair of kind of work gloves in case you need to crawl over things, you need to move things. I mean, who knows what you need these for, any type of protection work gloves. Here's a very cool tool that I carry with me. Um, this is a Gold Zero flashlight. Um, it has multiple things. It has uh, a beam that can be used. It also has a flashing red light that you can access. And it has kind of a reading light if you want to do that so you can use it for reading or a more broad spectrum light. The really nice thing about this particular flashlight and the reason I like it is you can see it has a solar panel on it right here. So you can charge it by way of solar. It also has a crank that you can crank the battery this way and you can see the lights light up and tell you if it's charged or not. So you can charge it that way. You can also hook it up to a UBS port and USB port and charge it that way if you can. And you can actually charge your phone off of it if you need to. You can plug right in here and then plug into your phone. So this is a multifunctional tool that to me, I've used numerous times. I can't tell you how much I use this and have used it in the past. It's been invaluable. The second thing I have, again, has to do with solar. And this is a very unique tool. I have the cables I need to charge my respective phone attached to a carabiner right here, as you can see. So I have that right there. And then you open this up and you lay it out. And even if you can't hook up the cables and you just want to charge your phone, the nice thing about it is it's a wireless charger. I can just lay my phone on it and it'll charge my phone. So if I'm sitting down, if I have to travel, or I'm having to be on the move and I'm going to take a break and I'm going to sit down for 15 or 20 minutes uh, and take a break. All I can do is take this out, lay it out in the sun. It'll start charging and all I have to do is lay my phone on it. So if I have gloves on, I don't have to worry about taking off my gloves and fumbling with all kinds of wires and connections. This makes it exceedingly easy to charge your phone. So that's a great little tool. Um, you can use it to charge other things. It also has a light on it as well. So you can use this as an additional flashlight and it's rechargeable. So that's a great little tool to have. That's mainly what I have here along with some rope. So I have several, probably know, maybe 10 or 15 feet of very heavy rope. In this particular pack pocket, I also have some uh, ammo for my long gun. Should I need some extra rounds for my long gun. So that's pretty much what I have in that pocket. Um, there's room for several more things if I wanted to put it in here, but that's put what I have. So let's move to the larger pocket. <clears throat> now, one of the things that you have to think about, you know, if you're coming home from work and you've got your work shoes on and your work socks on, and unfortunately it's a snowstorm and now you have to get out and walk, is you want to be able to keep your feet warm. Even if you're in a tropical environment, if you have regular old socks or no socks at all, sometimes walking can be very uncomfortable. You can get blisters. So I always carry a very good pair of wool socks. And these wool socks fit very well. They're also fairly compressible. So if you do have tight shoes like work shoes, you can usually wiggle your feet into them. But in particular, if you're in a cold environment or it gets cold at night, these are great socks to keep your feet warm. And for those of you that have been out in the cold at night, you know that keeping your feet warm is essential to being keeping your body warm. So these are absolutely uh, invaluable to have those. Next, I carry a plastic bag. Obviously, this can be used for catching rainwater if I need to. It can be used as additional raincoat, though I already have my raincoat with me but this can be an additional raincoat. There's multiple valuable uh, items that you can do with your, with your plastic bag. Some toilet paper, another very essential tool. Um, most people don't think about putting this in their bag, but it's a very important tool. If nothing else, it provides a degree of comfort to you that if you have to use the restroom, you can clean yourself properly because if you don't, then you can get chafing and rashes and that can become very difficult and uncomfortable to walk. 
So the other thing that I carry, and this is a very unique tool that most people don't think about, but whether you're walking in the woods or there might be civil unrest, or you might be walking where you expect potentially a bad event could happen and you have to protect yourself. Um, I bought these uh, soccer style for kids and these are basically shin guards. So these are designed to go on your shin whenever you're playing soccer. But this is what I do with them. I wear them like this. So I put my hands in here and I have them on my arm like this. And so I put them on on both arms. These are incredible little assets that do a great thing. So if you're walking through the woods and you need to knock bushes out of the way, they can keep you from getting hit with thorns or any other type of things that might scratch you or injury, injure you. The other thing, if you're in civil unrest and you need to protect yourself and you're in your fighting position, you need to protect yourself, this is a great tool to use for self-protection. So these right here, I always carry with me in my get home bag because you never know when you can use them. And it's a very light item to carry that can contribute to you surviving a bad situation. Well, the next thing is I always carry a dark colored, whoops, a dark colored long sleeve shirt. So whether it's in the tropics or um, in the winter time, having something because I might have a bright colored shirt on, I might have something on that I don't want to be uh, so obvious, but I wear this and also it allows me to cover these up. So people don't see these and this might set off somebody or they might be thinking anything, but I can put those underneath my shirt, nobody sees them. This also protects me from bushes, poison ivy, any other thing that I might need. So I always carry a long sleeve dark shirt that can act as a second degree of, or a second degree of insulation too. So the next item I have here in this top little pouch right here is I have a list, I have a bag full of kind of miscellaneous items. I have several extra batteries. Should I need those? I have another knife semi-multi-tool that allows me to open cans, open bottles, things like that. And then I have another, ugh, a little bit difficult for me to get out. I have a compass and I have another multi-tool here as well. Kind of a smaller version of the multi-tool. So I have those items in here as well as backups along with batteries that go with my flashlights that are in my truck. But as I mentioned before, I have a long sleeve black sweater in here or black shirt in here. But if you live in an area where the winters are colder and you might need more warmth, this is the uh, section of the bag that you might want to put in extra sweater. You might want to put in anything else that you might need to keep warm if you have to get out of your car and walk. Um, the next item is an MRE. Good. Now I carried some snacks like that. And those are good to keep you going and everything. But if you have to walk for a day or two to be able to have a nice hot meal at night, especially if it's in the winter time and it's cold, this is a great motivator. This is a great thing to give you a sense of confidence. The fact that you can have a good meal to eat. So I only carry one, um, depending on where you're at and where you're traveling. Um, if I were to go on a long distance road trip, I might put two or three in just so I could have a wide variety of meals to eat and have something that's going to be very hot to eat. So an MRE in here. Some people think of freeze dried food and put freeze dried food in here. I don't like that choice for a get home bag because that means I have to start a fire. I have to heat up water and I have to do those things in my get home bag. I like a Coleman multi-purpose stove so I can use a wide range of fuels from diesel to gasoline to typical camp food. And that way then I can heat up water <clears throat> and I can make freeze dried meals. But on a three day thing or for my get home bag, I just like MREs. And I, there's nothing better than a nice meal when you're feeling bad. In case I can't get good clean water, again, I have several carabiners on here so I can hook it to the outside of my backpack if I need to. But I have this nice epic water filter so you can put it in. It's got a wa huge water filter on it right here. It has a pouring device and a straw you can use to drink out of it. So if I need to collect water along the ways, 
um, I can do that with this and clean it and I can put on here. If I can find a good source of water before I leave, then naturally I would fill up my hydration pack, which I think this is a two liter, maybe a three liter hydration pack. But one of the things to remember about a hydration pack, water weighs about seven pounds per gallon. So every time you put a lot of water in your backpack, that's gonna create a nice cushion against you and be nice, but it's also gonna add considerable weight. So you may wanna think about limiting the amount of water you carry depending on the circumstances, but this would give you a resource that you can get relatively non-clean water and have it clean enough to drink and do that. So that's kind of my get home bag right there. Um, I hope that this gives you some insight and some ideas about how you can develop your own. Um, I suggest that you have a get home bag in every car. Uh, if you have kids or you have family members and you're traveling together, you may want two or three get home bags, one for each person in the car, particularly if you have kids and you need baby food or you need some special toys to keep your kids busy should you be distracted for a period of time or you want different walking shoes. And so for me, even when I'm wearing dress shoes, I always keep another pair of walking shoes or hiking boots in my truck. You might consider that too if you have to do long drives to work and back so that you have those available for you. I hope this was insightful for you and informative and gives you some ideas about how to do this. So if unfortunately during this upcoming winter, anything should happen where you get stranded on the road for maybe an extended period of time, you'll have the tools and resources that'll make that bad event not so bad and a lot safer. Go to our website. There's some blog articles on there on urban survival, situational awareness, and a lot of other great tools that will, or articles that will give you great information. You can go to the Buyers Club and you can get all the products at discounted prices that are extremely valuable and will help you to get the tools that you need to set up your get home bag. Thank you very much. Be safe and we'll catch you soon.